For those who are looking to get their first pull-up, or people who are trying to crank up their performance in pull-ups, getting more reps, using more weight, the right accessory movements can be huge. Welcome everybody, I'm Dr. Sam Spinelli with Citizen Athletics, and today we're talking about the best accessories for pull-ups. We've done a few recent videos discussing pull-ups, contrasting chin-ups and pull-ups, as well as a progression on how to get your first pull-up. Today we're building off those and analyzing the best accessory movements for the pull-up. We dug into the research, explored tons of studies, analyzing the determinants of success for pull-ups, what muscles were utilized, and then what exercises were best for those muscles in regards to pull-ups. So let's get into it. A person's success with pull-ups is heavily dependent on their muscle mass. The pull-up utilizes a lot of muscles across her upper body and trunk. Some of the major muscles are the lats, teres major, biceps brachii, brachioradialis, the infraspinatus, pec major, trapezius, and trunk muscles like the rectus abdominis and external obliques. So essentially, it utilizes a ton of upper body pulling and trunk muscles. Pretty much everyone that you can name. Performing pull-ups and their derivatives will do a good job of challenging these muscles, but we can incorporate some additional movements to help build up even more volume and get them even stronger. Usually when people start thinking of accessory movements for the pull-up, one of the first things that jumps to their mind is the lat pull-down. This seems reasonable, it looks pretty similar, and we can easily scale the weight, making it more accommodating than the standard pull-up. However, we've had numerous studies emerge showing that the strength in the lat pull-down doesn't directly correlate to pull-up performance. This might seem weird to people, but when we look at studies analyzing the comparison of activation of different muscles in the pull-up and seated lat pull-down, it starts to make sense. For instance, while the lat pull-down does have a similar activation of some of the back muscles, it doesn't challenge the midsection, particularly the abdominal muscles, like the pull-up. In contrast, if we perform the lat pull-down in a kneeling position, we actually see a much more similar muscle activation pattern as the pull-up. If we perform the lat pull-down in a kneeling position, we see a much more similar muscle activation pattern as the pull-up. This is done just like we would a regular seated lat pull-down, where we're holding onto a handle, focusing on bringing the handle down to our chest, tucking our elbows back, but we don't have the advantage of the seat allowing us to lean back as much and use momentum. As well, since our legs aren't secured under pads, we now have to fight our spine and hips trying to extend, making our anterior abdominal muscles work harder, similar to a pull-up. Therefore, utilizing the kneeling pull-down might be a viable option as a substitution instead of the regular seated lat pull-down. This exercise can be done with a standard pull-down machine, but just kneeling behind the seat instead of sitting on it. It can also be done with a cable system or bands where you secure them at a high point and then pull down from kneeling. Now, while this movement does show a similar activation pattern as the pull-up, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best accessory movement. Since you're likely already doing pull-ups or variations of them, instead of just repeating the same pattern over and over again, what we can do instead is utilize exercises that are more targeted to address muscles that are very important for the pull-up. That way we can develop these muscles to a higher degree and get them ready to really have success in the pull-up. What we wanna do is pick one or two movements for each of these and then implement them in our program after a pull-up work. In our video on how to get your first pull-up, we outlined the basics of building a program dedicated to pull-ups. So if you wanna refer back to that, we'll put a link in the description box. Let's start looking at these muscles and different exercises for them. When we consider the function of the lats, there are two main types of exercises that we're looking for. A shoulder extension based exercise and a shoulder adduction based exercise. Since you should be doing pull-ups, which will be providing a certain type of stress to the lats, we can pick movements for these patterns that complement this and don't conflict. For instance, a close grip row with a slight lean back is an excellent option to utilize given the peak challenge and angle we're utilizing the lats to work through for shoulder extension. Similarly, a kneeling side bent lat pull-in is a good option since we can work the lats one at a time and really emphasize an adduction pattern. What's also great about it is that since it's a unilateral exercise, we can more easily focus on squeezing each lat one at a time and utilizing a mind-muscle connection to maximize lat activation. We actually have a study showing that with deliberate and directed attention, you can have increased activation from your lats. Now we can move on to the biceps brachii and brachioradialis. Most people probably know the biceps as the elbow flexors. However, the brachioradialis is also important in this action. Performing the standard bicep curl shows good activation of both these muscles. So you can simply add in some curls to your routine and you'll start utilizing both of these muscles. If you're someone who's already been doing curls and looking to take it up to a higher degree and get more specific to the pull-up, 
then we can consider the reverse curl. Here we flip our hands over to a pronated position and do the bicep curl. This has been shown to keep a relatively similar activation level of the biceps, but significantly increases the activation of the brachioradialis. Since we perform pull-ups with a similar overhand grip, it makes sense to do some of our work like this to ensure we build up the specific musculature for that pattern. If you're doing bicep work two days a week, you could do one day with palms up and one day with palms down, and that way you hit both. As we transition to the infraspinatus, Townsend et al. identified the prone shoulder horizontal abduction being a great exercise to get high activation out of it. By simply rotating your shoulder into an externally rotated position, we get even higher activation during this movement, which is a huge bonus. This exercise in particular is a solid choice for an accessory movement for the pulp, since it not only shows a high activation of the infraspinatus, but it also shows good activation of the middle delt and mid trapezius both of which are really important for the pull-up. Now, if we stick with the same exercise, but raise our arm up a bit further to about 120 degrees of shoulder abduction, we can really challenge our lower trapezius. Studies from Ekstrom and Reynold have reported this being one of the best exercises for lower trap activation. Similarly to the move prior with the arm a bit lower, it also challenges many of these other muscles like the deltoid, as well as working the infraspinatus again. Given they have overlap, we can follow a similar approach as we did for the bicep curl, where we have half of our time working with the arm at 90 degrees, and the other half the time with the arm at 120 degrees. This way, we work all of the musculature to a high degree. For the rectus abdominis and the external obliques, performing some movement like a hanging knee raise or hanging leg raise is a great choice. By tucking our knees to our chest or our legs up to the roof, we have to posteriorly tilt our pelvis and flex our spine against gravity. This is heavily done by our external obliques and rectus abdominis. If you look at the pull-up, as we go up, these muscles are doing this action isometrically, resisting being pulled into extension. The knee raise is a bit easier of the two options, so for those who aren't quite as strong in the midsection, start there. For those who are stronger, go with the leg raise and get those feet to the roof. Lastly, this gets us working on our hand grip strength, which is very important for pull-ups. Collectively, these movements make up some of the best options for accessories for the pull-up. Now, realistically, if you're performing pull-ups, pull-up variations, and then adding in exercises like pull-downs, rows, bicep curls, some upper back and ab work, you should be covered. The movements that we listed are ones that currently shine out a bit more in the research, but there are tons of options, and the biggest thing is you gotta pick one, do it consistently, and try to progressively overload with it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, tap that like button, subscribe, and let us know what kind of content you want us to cover in the future. Thanks.